So hopefully the seniors have had a chance to look at our school's uh, district's website where we keep all the scholarships. So uh, our counselors and everybody in the district that whenever they receive a scholarship, they um, send the information to our um, website department and they upload it. So there's a ton of scholarships and the website is constantly updated. So I will put the link in the chat. Uh, but as you can see, you can filter them based on uh, if, whether it's a local scholarship, a national scholarship. So I always recommend students to start with the ones that are local since they have a better chance of getting those since they're going uh, against a pool of smaller applicants. So definitely check this out and all the scholarships that we'll be covering today, uh, you will be uh, able to find them on here. So I just wanted to share that with everybody and I'll make sure to put that in the chat. So I'll pass it off to Ms. Alma Felix. Thank you. I'm going to share my screen too here. Okay. So hi everyone. My name is Alma Felix. I'm with the Lancaster County Community Foundation and I'm here to talk about the scholarships that we offer for Lancaster County students. Ooh. Uh, so, like I said, we're the community foundation. So we we say that we embolden uh, extraordinary community. We like to invest in programming, students, um, organizations to make Lancaster County better, and we do that through endowments, grants, and scholarships. Endowments is how we get our funding, um, and then grants and scholarships are how we put that funding out into the community. This is just some pictures of some events that we have that you may recognize, like the Extraordinary Give. We support uh, some other programming. Um, so endowments, it lasts forever. So that's why we're able to continue to give scholarships every year. And, and it allows us uh, to do that. So let's get right into it. <laughs> oh, so grants are uh, money that we give to organizations and scholarships are money given to uh, students, to a person, and we have both. So when you navigate our scholarships, our grants and scholarships page, you're just gonna have to scroll to the bottom and go directly to the scholarships. You can skip over all the grant section. So some of the scholarships that we offer, and these are our general scholarships, so they're open to all of Lancaster County students. Um, we have a couple of these. One of, one of the ones that we have is general. It doesn't have really any uh, parameters as to what you need to study. So I would recommend that if you don't know what you wanna study yet in college, you apply for the general scholarship. It, it says in the description, general scholarship, um, no particular field, field of study, because then if you decide that you wanna change, um, change your course of study while you're in college, then it won't affect your scholarship because it's not bound by, by what you're studying. And this is a $2,000 scholarship per year renewable. So you would get it once and then you'd be able to renew it for up to four years while you're uh, enrolled in college in an undergraduate or technical uh, degree. Um, we also have a scholarship meant for creative writing, journalism, marketing, mass communications, media studies, and that's $500 for one year. So you would only get it the one year and um, that would be it, it's not renewable. Um, if there's a certain a major that you're doing that's not specifically these words, but it's related, it, you could still um, be eligible for it. Um, we also have another scholarship that focuses on majors in geology, medicine, agriculture, mechanical hey, engineering. Sir. I and, look at anything going on in the kitchen. And, <laughs> and mechanical uh, drafting. And that is a uh, $1,000 per year renewable. So this is also one of those that if you get it the first year, you'd be able to renew it for up to four years while you're enrolled in college. And then there's a scholarship that we have specifically for African-American students. It's $2,000 per year renewable. Um, and then we have one that is for a student who was involved with Big Little or Big Brothers and Big Sisters of Lancaster County. And that's $400 for one year. So if you at any point participated in that program, you would be eligible um, for that scholarship. So to be eligible to apply, you must be a resident of Lancaster County, uh, be a current senior in 
Lancaster County who lives in Lancaster County or you go to a Lancaster County high school. Uh, so if you live outside of Lancaster County, but you're enrolled in a Lancaster County high school for some reason, you'd still be eligible to apply. Um, and you would have to be attending an undergraduate degree. So that could be a four year college and university. It could be uh, an associates. It could also be a vocational technical school uh, for the upcoming year. So you must be full time. You also need a cumulative grade point average of 2.5 or higher on a 4.0 grading scale. And you would have to maintain the 2.5 requirement while you're enrolled in college if it's a renewable scholarship. Um, how you would apply is uh, you would go to our grants page. So it's langfound.org slash grants. Again, like I said, you would scroll all the way to the bottom and in the scholarship sections, you would see general scholarships, learn more and apply. So you click there and you would be able to find the information of all these scholarships that I uh, just mentioned. You could see the descriptions of each one and which ones are renewable or not. And then you would uh, select the apply button. Once you go there, you're gonna be directed to a Scholarship America page um, where you would have to then create a Scholarship America port like portal hub uh, on the hub. And that's how you would apply to our scholarship. So Scholarship America is our grant partner. So they're the, ones, they're the ones that manage all our scholarships and that's why our application is on their page. Um, what you're gonna need for the application is a current and complete transcript from your school. So you would have to reach out to your school and ask for your, uh, for your transcript. And then that the instructions on how to submit that is in the application. You're gonna need some financial information. So you would want to ask your parent guardians or tutors and a list of your extracurricular activities. And I, I encourage you to include any clubs, sports, um, volunteering that you have done, anything like that. This year, and, and I'll mention this, this year we removed needing a reference from a student just because of the whole pandemic. Um, it might've been harder for students to create those connections or with all these closers, it, it might just be harder to get access to that. So we removed that from, the application, at least for this year. Um, okay, the deadline to apply for our general scholarships is February 4th of 2021 for this year. And that would be that you would get the scholarship for this year if you're starting college in um, August of 20 of this, yeah, 2021. You, there, that is a week from today. <laughs> so the deadline is at 3 p.m. on February 4th, which is right around the corner. So if you do want to apply and you haven't heard about the scholarship yet, you might still have time. If you do, I would recommend that you reach out to your school to get your transcript today and try to fill everything out over the weekend, today or tomorrow. Um, and with because we don't have the reference, you know, it's easier. You might still have some time to apply. But the other thing with our scholarships is that they're available every year. So you don't have to be a senior to apply. You could already be enrolled in college and continue to apply every year. So also, if you don't receive a scholarship this year, you could continue to try um, to get it while you're in college. Yeah, and that's, we offer scholarships every year. So one of the questions that I also get is, um, what if you're going to college out of state? That is fine as long as you were a college, a Lancaster County graduate or you lived in Lancaster County when you applied for the scholarship, let's say it's a renewable scholarship, um, you would still qualify. So you can go to an out of state uh, college. Um, another question is, is does the application, uh, is it based on financial need. So not all of it is based on financial need. Some of the stuff is, but no matter what your current situation is, I would encourage you to apply anyways, because um, you know you may think that you're making too much, but you're not. Scholarship America has a certain way of including it in the um, review of your application. So don't be afraid by financial situation, by the income, just, just apply anyways. Um, 
Yeah, uh, besides these general scholarships, we offer school specific scholarships. And the only one that might be uh, open to you is if you're going to Millersville University, we do have a uh, scholarship specifically at Millersville University and you would have to already be accepted and enrolled. And then you would go through their uh, scholarships department to find information about how to apply because that is managed directly by uh, Millersville University. So are there any questions about our scholarships, about how to apply? If you navigate our scholarships website, you will see some information that I added on there about how to navigate through the Scholarship America Hub portal um, and helpful you know, links as to how to fill out the information. You can jot down my uh, email if you have any questions uh, after today. But any questions right now? Nope. <laughs> I have a question, Alma, if it's okay to pop in. Yeah. I wondered if you all um, prioritize students who intend, at least for now, to stay in Lancaster County after mm -hmm. graduation. Yeah, that is a good question. Um, we don't really have that as part of our um, application or requirement, but I, I guess it would be a good thing to include in, in your application if you do, because it, they, it might be part of, um, you know, the value that they see in, in your application when, when they're reviewing it. Thanks. Yep. We have a question here in the chat. Um, how many scholarships do you give a year? It, okay, yeah, so it varies because it depends on um, each year what students have um, graduated. So then it would, if the students graduated, then we would have those scholarships available to give this year if they are renewable for, uh, let's see. Let's go back here. So for instance, these ones that are the big brother or big sister. So this one, we only have one every year the little bit, yeah, the Lancaster County one, the African American Students Scholarship. So that's $2,000 per year. I believe we have um, three this year, but it might range three or five depending on the year and, and what students have graduated because it is renewable. Um, the, gen the one that we have the most of is actually the general scholarship. So this year we have maybe like three, but some years we might have 11. <laughs> There's just a lot of, out, of them out there right now. So it really varies depending on the year. And um, if you go on our scholarships website, you'd be able to see exactly how many we have uh, per scholarship every single year. So even if you see right now that there's only like three, four, five, one year we might have 11 of a certain scholarship. So, yeah. Any other questions? No. Okay. Awesome. And like I said, I'll include my email in the chat if anybody does want to reach out after the presentation um, and have any other questions or if you need help with the application. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Alma. Uh, and up next, we have Amy Heath with the uh, Lancaster Dollars for Higher Learning. Can you all see my screen and hear me? Okay. Thank you so much for inviting me this evening. Um, so I'll go back to the beginning here. I'm sorry. And uh, so we are Lancaster Dollars for Higher Learning. Um, we've been helping students for 60 years. So we started, I should update this, it, February will be our anniversary. Um, so we've been around since 1961 and we've helped over 12,000 students with $17 million over, over that time span. So um, we're excited to go into our 60th year 
our application period, um, we have a lot of similarity, similarities with what Alma had just explained, um, but our application period is just coming up. So uh, February 1st will be the first day that you can apply. And then we leave it open through the end of April. Um, and this year, uh, actually we're helping this current school year, we're helping over 250 students in Lancaster and each student is receiving a loan of $1,700 for the school year. Um, and the interest-free loans are interest-free, so there's zero interest for the life of the loan. So at no point do we ever charge any interest. So you'll see our website and um, my contact information there. And I'll also put that in the chat so you'll, so you'll have it. And there's just three requirements uh, for applicants for our loans. And the one is to be a resident of Lancaster County. Um, and that doesn't restrict where you're going to school. Like we have, we have students going to 85 schools across the country this year. So um, it, it's, if, you're, if you continue to be a dependent on your parents' tax documents and your parents are still in Lancaster, you know, that's your permanent address. And then your school is your temporary address. Um, so, and it would, other people are eligible if you are an independent student, but then you must be a resident of Lancaster County. And um, you must attend an accredited post-secondary institution and you must be enrolled full-time. So that does include, as Alma had said, like the trade and technical schools, um, grad school, as long as you're full-time and it's an accredited institution. And the last um, piece of the puzzle is the uh, financial need. And how we determine that is if you've complete, you must complete the FAFSA, which I hope um, some of you have already or you're starting to. Um, once you complete the FAFSA, you'll receive an email uh, from the government saying that it's been processed. It takes several days to process and then you'll receive what's called a student aid report. So then you go back into your FAFSA and retrieve that document it's about a four or five page document that sort of summarizes your FAFSA. And you would upload that to our online application. So I would say, it, you know, if you take about an hour to do your FAFSA or a half hour, our application takes about 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Um, so it's fairly simple. It's just kind of, you know, your, your contact information and the, the FAFSA. And what we look for on there is the student or the, EFC, which is called the expected family contribution. And that kind of shows what your need is. So again, you would go to our website and um, they are interest-free for the life of the loan. And that's our traditional loan program. We also have, we have recently launched a trade and technical program for loans. Um, we're starting off kind of small and restricting it to the um, Lancaster County Career and Technology Center. So if you'll be graduating um, high school and heading off to the CTC for one of these four programs, they're the more rub robust programs, um, you would be eligible for up to $3,400 for the program. So that's the practical nursing, the automotive technology, the veterinary technology and dental hygiene. And again, the um, loans are interest-free and the repayment is, is the same as the traditional loans. And you would apply online. You'll just see like um, another section for the tote loan. And so to, to summarize, like our application period is February, March, April. If you are offered a loan due to financial need, then we would provide you with legal documents in June. And the student would be the borrower and the parent or guardian would be a co-borrower. So we do have two signers on each loan. And then we would, um, they need to come back to our office prior to the end of, end of August or end of June, I'm sorry. And then in August, we issue the checks directly to the schools. So on your behalf, a check would go um, to the school and they would post it to your account to assist with tuition. So this year, um, our loans may be between 1,500 and 2,000. We, the board has not decided yet because we, 
we don't know what our funding will be and we don't know how many applicants there will be. So it does kind of vary each year. Um, that decision would be made in May once all the applications have been received. And you do need to reapply each year. So you would be eligible for a maximum of four loans. Um, and if you do get these four loans, you'll be saving at least $1,000 in interest. So it, it is definitely valuable. Um, but as Alma said, it's, it's never too late if you, know, if you have older siblings or you don't get around to applying this year. Um, you could always apply in your sophomore or junior year um, and just save that much more from the interest. Um, the repayment program is we allow a six month grace period after you graduate or stop being a full time student. And then we um, require a repayment of $110 per month. So even if you get four loans, it is still just $110 a month. We try to make that affordable because we know, you know, with the amount that we're offering, it is helpful. And we are helping over 250 students this year. Um, but I, we realize it's just a piece of the puzzle. It's not going to cover tuition, certainly. So, but sometimes it does make the difference. So we try to try to make that repayment affordable. And we can do this because of uh, we have a really good high repayment rate. Um, nearly all our loans get repaid. And we also rely on donations such as the extra give. We had a really big day um, for the extra give last year and then uh, personal donations. So I've been donating for many years and um, my kids have gotten the loans and now I work here and now my one daughter is repaying. So it's kind of come full circle for us. So I don't know if you have any questions. All right, it looks like uh, no questions are coming in, but if you do have any later, we'll put Amy's contact um, or you can send in a chat. Uh, and up next, we have Darlene Newman with the Lancaster Partnership Program. Thank you, Amy. Thank you. Darlene, I'm sorry. I, I'm not sure if you're, I think you're muted. I apologize. Thank you. Can you hear me now? Okay, thank you. All right. It's great to be here. And I'm filling in for Christina Williams, who runs our Lancaster Partnership Program for us here at Millersville. Um, my name is Darlene Newman, and I'm Director of Student Access and Support Services. And uh, um, get to it. The Lancaster Partnership dedicates itself to fulfilling its primary mission to encourage all students enrolled in the Lancaster uh, School District to graduate from high school and pursue a post-secondary, pursue a post-secondary education. So in order for you to be a part of this program, you need to be enrolled while you're in high school. Okay, and this, once you get enrolled, you can receive or, or reap the benefits of the scholarship that we have. Our program um, meets with students from grades 12 to nine through 12. And usually we have our meetings on Thursday evenings from six to seven. And because of COVID this year and last year, we uh, just like everyone else, we've been doing Zoom meetings with our um, students that we're working with. To talk a little bit about the scholarship, we work with students from Lancaster McCaskey through um, nine through 12. Now, some of those students do not end up going to Millersville, but the students that uh, decide they wanna come and be a part of Millersville University, they qualify or, or they are eligible for this here uh, scholarship that we offer. And that scholarship is uh, GPA based. 
So um, just say if you have a 2.5, 2.7 GPA, the maximum number of dollars, you can get $2,000 per year or $1,000 per semester. And that is combined with uh, your FIA or your Pell Grant or any other scholarship that you would receive coming into the university. So it doesn't interfere with any other scholarship. So we try to get our students to apply for as many scholarships as they can, you know, to help out with their education. 2.71 to 3.2, the maximum is $3,000, 1,500 per semester, again, combined with FIA and Pell. And if you get a 3.21, to 4.0, the maximum you can get is $5,000 per semester, per year, I should say, and $2,500 per semester. Now, what makes this great is because Millersville University have, uh, we try to work on uh, 30 credits per year to graduate in four years, okay? So just say after your freshman year, you didn't quite get 30 credits and you wanted to use some of your scholarship job dollars to take a class in the summer, you can do that. You could take that money and take an additional class in the summer so that it would keep you on track. And in some cases, some students would take it, uh, additional classes to stay ahead or get ahead. So that helps out with a lot of our students. Now, what we have to understand is the students that qualify for this student are students that are a part of this program while you're in high school, okay? So in order for you to be a part, you need to apply for the LPP program while you're in high school. Once you get in college, you cannot join the LPP program, okay? Um, in order to do that, you can contact Christina Williams or myself and we'll help you get enrolled. Is there any questions? I That's all I have for you. We did put the link for the application to join the Lancaster Partnership on in the chat. So if any student is interested, I would definitely recommend. Uh, it's a great uh, program. They offer you a lot of support through high school uh, and it's never too late because you never know where, where you'll end up. And we all know Millersville is a great school. Um, so any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. All right, we'll move on to the MLK with uh, Dr. Raff. Thank you, Darlene. Right. And real quick, just kind of a, a recap of all the scholarships we've mentioned, the programs we've mentioned. Um, these are really amazing opportunities. And <clears throat> just, just know how unique this is that McCaskey has all these opportunities uh, for you. So first off, we kind of touched on it in the beginning at that uh, on the scholarship website. Lancaster Education Foundation has tens of thousands of dollars worth of scholarships just for McCaskey students. Um, obviously, Lancaster County Community Foundation, definitely something you want to take advantage of. Um, I, I have a personally, um, I know my wife did the Lancaster Dollars for Higher Learning and that's been a great experience for her and, um, you know, they just keep in mind that, you know, you, if you have the opportunity of most students have to pay some sort of loans, so if it's either federal loans that you have to pay interest on, or loans that you don't have to pay interest on, you might as well have the ones you don't pay anything else on. Um, so definitely something um, to look at uh, and, and think about. Um, we have a question in the chat. Uh, I'm gonna put again, the link, it's a tiny URL link. You can do the LPP application. It's tinyurl.com slash LPP apply. LPP is fantastic, not just for the financial aspect, but also just for uh, the support you get while you're there. That's huge. We know our students that go to Millersville are successful because they have a support system. Uh, and that leads me to the MLK scholarship. So I'm. I'm privileged to serve on the board of this organization. I also work at the district um, and it's a it's really exciting organization um, with a great opportunity for you as students. So the MLK scholarship has been around since 1982 and it was started by a group of teachers from King Elementary School uh, who started with 500 bucks to start a scholarship and it's grown to now give over a million dollars in scholarships to more than 300 McCaskey graduates. 
Um, so this money is awarded uh, based on fundraising. Uh, so it's an entirely volunteer run organization and we do fundraising and work with donors. Uh, this past year, we gave out more than $170,000 to McCaskey grads specifically uh, with 29 different scholarships. And one thing I always stress with students, you know, that's, that's almost 30 students. And yet last year we had less than 50 students apply. So your chances of getting, you know, most students get $5,000, your chances of getting a scholarship are like better than one in two. So, you know, it always blows my mind that more students don't take advantage of this. Uh, any student at McCaskey, if you meet the GPA requirements, you need to apply. Um, it, it's just a no brainer. So um, I'll talk a little bit about kind of how you do that. Um, last year, some these are examples of some of our recipients, might be some people you recognize um, who have gone off doing great things, uh, going places like Millersville, um, f and um, Kent State, all, all sorts of different schools uh, here in the local area so, and, and beyond. So great opportunity um, and we're you know, excited to celebrate those grads as well. Uh, so a couple things that you have to do for the scholarship. Uh, you're going to need to provide all your letters of acceptance from uh, the colleges you've gotten, uh, as well as your award letters. Now, we know that sometimes, uh, you know, you haven't received those from schools. Some schools take longer. Uh, some sort of explanation for that, some sort of, you know, reason why, you know, you don't have that. And okay, that's something you can always add later, uh, as well as you're going to need to provide uh, that FAFSA student aid report, that last page on the FAFSA you get, that's going to show your estimated family contribution. Now, I will say again, just because you have a high EFC doesn't mean you shouldn't apply. Um, you still, you know, it's a factor that's considered, but it's not the only factor that's considered. So no matter who you are, still think about applying, so apply. Um, so the first thing that you need to do and the main aspect is submitting an online application. So you're going to have to provide some personal family information uh, and really make sure you've got to provide a recent and updated and accurate email and phone number. So that's how you're going to find out if you make it to the next round and scheduling the interview process. You also want to list your school and community activities and definitely, you know, don't uh, don't sell yourself short on this. So show, share the things you're involved in, whether that's uh, working a job, youth group, volunteering, being involved in leadership, a sport, you know, those are really important things. Uh, you wanna be able to highlight those and share those. Um, and it's not really weighted so like one is better than the other, you know, contributing at home and taking care of a family member, you know, that's just as important as working or volunteering. So, you know, there's lots of ways everyone uh, contributes. Uh, awards and honors, whether that's, um, you know, maybe you got a CTE honor or honor roll or whatever that might be. Uh, and then that work experience as well. Um, you also have to have a three letters of recommendation. Uh, so you've got, that's one thing I wanna stress, ask your uh, teachers or whoever you wanna be who does your recommendations. And I'll talk a little bit about that in a bit. Uh, ask them early, don't wait till the last minute. Um, last year we had some students who applied and were not considered because they're Recommenders did not send their their uh, letters in in time. So please make sure and do that. Like I mentioned, your letter of acceptance, your financial aid award letters, your EFC. Uh, and if you want, you can also provide some additional information regarding your family, school, or financial situation. You know, especially this year, you know, the EFC might not tell the whole story. You know, it's ba based on taxes that happened before COVID. So, you know, there's the opportunity to say, yes, our our family income is higher, but here's what's going on with my family. Maybe a parent lost a job. There's all sorts of different things. So we want to make sure uh, that you have the opportunity to explain that um, to the, to the uh, reviewers. So the application is due April 9th, uh, and that is a hard deadline. Uh, every year we have students who, who really wait to the last minute. I would highly recommend that you do not do that. Um, please do this early. Uh, you have a whole team of people here at the Future Ready Center who's here to help. Uh, we'll make sure and put uh, the link in the chat or how you can request a meeting with one of us and we are happy to help you with your essay and your application. Once you do that, the next step is a student interview. Uh, so there's an interview with all the applicants uh, and that'll be done via Zoom. And then students are notified at the end of April. So it's pretty quick that you find out. And typically we would do an awards banquet 
for all participants or recipients in mid-May. Uh, it's held at Holy Trinity Lutheran Church. Uh, this year, that's going to look a little different because of COVID-19. There probably won't be an in-person banquet. Uh, one thing that is in this every year, uh, this is the Martin Luther King Memorial Scholarship, and we require that you respond to an essay question uh, from Dr. King. Uh, and that question is, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King once said, life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? And then you've got to respond to that and talk about how it applies to your life. I definitely want to stress, make sure and write a new essay responding to this. Every year there's students who try to repurpose other essays or things they've written that might sound great, but have nothing to do with the essay. You know, we always can tell. So write something fresh, something new for it. Um, you know, when you're looking at a $5,000 to $20,000 scholarship, it's worth writing something new for. Make sure it's well-written, make sure it's proofread. Have someone else look over it for you, um, whether that's a teacher, a Future Ready Center, whoever that might be, but let someone else take a look at it. I know that's something I, I try and do in general because sometimes you just don't see things um, when you're kind of writing them yourself. It helps to have another pair of eyes on it. So I mentioned the uh, Zoom interview. Uh, you will have this scheduled by the MLK board. Again, this is gonna be scheduled via email. So you've gotta make sure you've got an up-to-date email address. You'll meet with the board and have a brief 10 minute conversation, which is just an opportunity uh, to tell a little bit more about yourself um, for the committee members. All right, so where do you find the scholarship? And I will put this link uh, in the chat here uh, when we're done. Uh, mlkjuniorfund.org is the website. And then when you get to onto the page here, you're gonna see there's a who we are section and you wanna click on scholarship application. Once you click on that, there's gonna be two different sections. There's gonna be the scholarship application and the application guide. Uh, so if you click on the application guide link, it's gonna explain everything you need to do for the application. Now the application is done in Google through uh, Google Forms. So there's kind of, it's a little tricky, I will say. Um, you, can sub, you can't really save the application in a traditional sense. Uh, what you have to do is submit it, but you are able to mark within the application that you're not actually done with the application. And then you can go back and edit your response at any point. Um, so this explains how to do this. There's also at the very bottom of this page, a PDF of all the questions that you would need to know for the application. So you could always do that in a separate Google Doc, separate Word document, and then post it, uh, paste everything in once you're ready. Now, the other option here from that website, this uh, first link is the application. So again, it's gonna be a Google form. You're gonna go in and answer all those questions, some of the kind of general personal information you're gonna to have to upload all those documents. So all those award letters, everything like that into this application as well. So that's kind of the, the long and short of the application. Again, the link is in the chat there. Um, we have two other teachers from McCaskey, Ms. Brumbach and Mr. Coonan are both on the MLK scholarship board. I know that they would love to, to chat with you. Uh, the Future Ready Center staff who is here is you know, happy and willing uh, to do that as well. That's what we're here for. Um, you can also email me if you have any questions uh, and we'll make sure and put all that information in the chat as well. Um, any other questions of, any questions for me here about the MLK scholarship? 